Today we talk about glow-in-the-dark filaments. Which glows the brightest and the longest? And let me show you how easily they can ruin your precious nozzles. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. This video is sponsored by Aurapol 3D Filament. High quality yet super affordable filament made here in Europe. Check them out using the link below. The idea for this video started with my wife buying glow-in-the-dark stars for our daughter's new bed, which turned out to be really crappy. At this point I remembered that I still had an old roll of glow-in-the-dark filament that I purchased way back when I did a bunch of nozzle wear tests. I made some really nice design that you can, by the way, find over on cnckitchen.store. But the burning question that I had was, did I use the best glow-in-the-dark filament? And how do different glow colors perform? That's why I went out and bought filament worth over $250 from the popular brands found on Amazon to some more special ones. I paid for them all by myself and only the Nobofil PETG was given to me for free. If you want to check them out, there are links in the description. First things first, glow-in-the-dark filaments are not radioactive. Don't laugh, I get this asked a lot and I know plenty of people who still believe that. And it's not too far-fetched, because there is or rather was radium paint used for quite a while for glowing dials, until people learned what radioactivity is and that it's probably not too healthy having such paint on your alarm clock, not even speaking of what happened to the poor folks that painted the dials in the first place. Radium paint is radioluminescent, so glows due to radioactive decay. Yet what we are dealing with in glow-in-the-dark filaments is phosphorescence. Phosphorescence means that a material can absorb light and later emit that light again over a longer period of time. In the past, zinc sulfate was used for that purpose, yet nowadays most glow-in-the-dark pigments contain strontium aluminate, which glows by an order of magnitude longer and brighter, is non-toxic and basically can be recharged indefinitely. I'm quite sure that most of the filaments that I tested use strontium aluminate for their glow, yet one roll stood significantly out. Ugh, it stinks! This box contains the most nasty and disgusting filament I have ever used. This is R3D ultra glow red and when I open the case I almost have to puke because it seriously smells like rotten eggs. And not just a tiny bit, it smells so much where only use in a well ventilated area will be followed. Yet I took one for the team and tested it for you. You're welcome. Besides the glowing red material I also tested the two more popular colors green and blue plus this rainbow filament from Tronxy. The green glowing materials were from Colorfab with their glow film, Overture, Amolen with their normal green and its shiny green, as well as Das filament and Nobofil green glowing PETG. The two blue materials were from Amolen and again the Austrian Nobofil. Yet if you're not looking for glow in the dark colors, but still want to stack up your filament supply, then check out today's video sponsor Aurapol and their super affordable filaments made in the EU. They offer a wide variety of different colors with prices often only half of what other competitors ask. You can of course use Aurapol's high quality filaments on any 3D printer, but their spools are also compatible with Bamboo Labs AMS for multicolor printing and prints come out with a really nice surface finish. Aurapol produces its filament in the Czech Republic, offers low shipping rates within Europe and if you're in Germany, you can even find them on Amazon. So stack up your filament supply and check out their offers using the link below. And if you're not only looking for aesthetically pleasing filaments, Aurapol also sells high temperature PLA, a wide variety of PTG colors and also tough and durable ASA for more demanding projects. If you live in the EU, you'll hardly find more affordable quality materials that are also produced locally. So visit aurapol.com and check the link in the description. Thanks to Aurapol for sponsoring this video. With my selection of glow-in-the-dark filaments, I wanted to test four things. How do the prints look in daylight and at night, which I tested with a 3D Banshee. Then I wanted to find out how thick you have to print to get the full glow potential, for which I printed stepped test samples. And of course, which one glows the brightest and the longest, for which I printed thick samples and then filmed them for a whole night. 
Finally, I wanted to test how different glow-in-the-dark filaments wear out your nozzle. Because if you didn't know, it's worse than most fiber reinforced materials. But there can be significant differences between brands. I even had to place the filament spool on top of my Waron 2.4 because some materials had such a rough surface that they didn't properly feed through the Bowden tube. Most glow-in-the-dark filaments print with a slightly transparent look, so that also the glowing particles on the inside can shine to the outside. Colorfab's glow film stands out a little because it's totally opaque with an ivory-colored matte finish. Amolent Sparkly Green is on the totally opposite side of the spectrum, because here the filament is very transparent with bigger, individual glowing spots that give it that sparkly appearance, which is very hard to capture on camera, but looks really nice in reality even though it's not particularly bright. Colorfab's glow fill also shows a similar effect in the dark and has a slightly speckled appearance, which looks really beautiful. Tronxy's rainbow glow and the horribly smelling ultra red R3D filament also show these individual points, yet they glow way less bright to start with. How the brightness really compares to the others is something we'll take a look at in a bit. One design that I made for my daughter and where I'm really proud of is this moon that I printed with different thicknesses. So some areas are brighter than others, which mimics how the moon really looks. The thicker the material, the brighter glow-in-the-dark prints usually are, basically an inverse of the popular lithophane lampshades. I tested this property with these stepped samples that go from 0.5mm thickness all the way to 4mm thickness. If we take a look at the brightness data, we can see that at the beginning the increase in brightness is significant, but from 2mm and higher you get diminishing returns, because the opaqueness of the material simply limits the amount of light that can get from the center to the outside. But how bright are the materials that I got and how long does the light last? I tried to approach this at least a bit scientifically, so I printed 3mm thick test swatches with 100% infill from each of the filaments. Then I charged them up as evenly as possible, using an electric turntable while blasting them with two 200 watts 5500 Kelvin studio lights. UV light would have even been better for charging up the samples, but in a real life scenario, you most of the time charge these parts up with a regular indoor light. Then I place them next to each other, separated by a piece of cardboard so one doesn't shine onto the other. Then I took images of the set in one minute intervals. I used all manual settings, so the camera should nicely be able to capture the decay of light over time. After 600 images and 10 hours, I used the Python script to analyze the images and extract the brightness of each of the samples and plotted the results in a graph. For this I converted the images into grayscale and then calculated the average gray value over the mark area. This might not be the perfect way, but at least now you know how I got my data. The first thing we can see in the plot is that the glow rapidly decreases right at the start. And after two hours, even the brightest one only glows with 10% of the initial brightness. This sounds horrible, but since our eyes adjust to the darkness, the samples still appear very bright after several hours in a bedroom for example. What we can see is that we have three brightness groups. The brightest ones are the green glow-in-the-dark filaments. The next ones are the blue glowing ones, plus the sparkly green and the rainbow filament. The red filament was the darkest because it probably still uses one of the older generation calcium sulfide phosphors. But which of the 10 filaments did perform the best now? R3D Red was the worst and didn't shine any longer than 30 minutes. Next came the sparkly green PLA from Amolen that didn't really shine noticeably anymore after two and a half hours, yet you will still be able to see some very dim speckles in the material from up close. Then came Tronxy's rainbow filament, which also didn't shine detectably anymore after four hours. From the two blue glow-in-the-dark filaments, the Nobofil was the winner. Both it and the one from Amolen glowed over eight hours, but the one from Nobofil was just a bit brighter. Four of the five green filaments were very close, with Das filament in position 5, Amolen in 4, Nobofil in 3 and Colorfab Glowfill came in second best. The glow-in-the-dark filament that won was Overture's green glowing PLA, which was the brightest and even after 10 hours was still noticeably glowing. The glowing capabilities are dependent on the phosphor itself, but also on the particle size and the amount that was added to the filament, and there are significant differences. I made some microscope shots of the filaments, which already shows how some materials basically contain splintered rocks, while others use very finely distributed glow pigments. 
That difference can already be felt by just touching the material. Strontium aluminate is known to be very hard and there are numerous examples of people killing their 3D printer nozzle because they printed something glowing. So I didn't only buy all of these filaments but also a set of brass nozzles that I used to test how much the tips wear down after only a 100 gram print. I extruded these blocks with 90% triangular infill where the nozzle regularly moves over the already printed infill slowly shaving down the tip which you can even hear. This is a worst case scenario but allows me to get results quickly. I made macro shots of each of the nozzles before and after the test and also measured the length. I selected the materials by feel and started with Tronxy's rainbow glowing filament. I was able to spot a ton of wear already on plain side and measuring the tip showed that 0.18 millimeters were missing. Then I tested Colorfab's glow fill and 100 grams of this filament removed almost half a millimeter from the nozzle tip. Yet you have to dig all the way down to the technical data sheet to find the comment that this material could wear down a brass nozzle. I really don't want to know how many nozzles look like this and the users are not even aware of it. Next I also tested the DAS filament glow in the dark which has the smoothest surface. After the test I could barely measure anywhere so you can also get lucky. Amulent Sparkle Green also has these big particles in it, yet not a lot of them. It still stripped one tenth of a millimeter from the nozzle tip after printing 100 grams. In conclusion I can say that if you consider printing low in the dark filament, use a hardened steel nozzle. Not a stainless steel nozzle, a hardened steel one. And on a really bad day even these can wear down after a while. If you had similar experiences let me know in the comments. So with all of these investigations, what can I say about the materials I tested? Green glows the brightest, blue is a little worse and red is only for people who like to smell their farts. If glow intensity is what you're looking for, get the one from Overture. Colorfab's glow fill looks in my opinion the best with its opaque finish and the slight speckles when it glows while still lasting very long. Just consider that it will kill your nozzles. Amulent sparkly green filament wasn't bright but looks really nice in person. If you only want to print a little glow in the dark and don't want to change your nozzles, the DAS filament PLA is a great choice. And if you look for glow in the dark PTG, Nobofills materials are also a solid option. Links to all of the materials are down in the description. And in the end, after all of this testing, are my glow in the dark stars now better than the bought ones? Well, at least they're brighter and definitely cooler. Yet a uh, thought popped into my head. Maybe the starboard ones are a bit dim by design so that kids don't feel blasted by studio lights all night long? What do you think? Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found this video interesting. If you want to support my work, head over to Patreon or become a YouTube member. Also check out the other videos in my library. I hope to see you in the next one. Auf Wiedersehen and goodbye! <coughs>